probably exceeding 2,000 years. The fact is that Columbus never came to the United States of America or North and South America. He came as close as San Salvador. Uh, there's a rumor that says that Columbus came to, United, to, to America. He did not come to America. He came to an island of America. Vespucci came to America, not Columbus. He came to the Caribbeans. But it is commonly stated, just as much as they state, that Columbus discovered America while the Indians sat down watching him doing it. Throughout history, the narrative of Christopher Columbus discovering America has been deeply ingrained in our education and culture. But what if I told you there is more to this story? First, let's watch this clip and I will share my thoughts. Pay attention. Now, but uh, all the, the, the knowledge of Africans in the Americas uh, quite knowledgeable to scholars. The fact that it's suppressed doesn't have uh, any validity at all. Let me bounce a couple of things off of you. One thing, this article that I'm going to be referring to, to our home audience and to our studio audience, this article came out in the September 19, issue, 81 issue of Science Digest. <coughs> And it's entitled Black Kings in Ancient America. You and some other black scholars believe that these people, African people, came to this continent before Columbus. We don't believe we know. How do you know? What the, evidence? The evidence is there. For example, when you go to uh, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and uh, at Ecuador and places like that, they have catches of uh, Carthaginian money found 200 feet down in the ground, meaning that there were preluvial disruptions and those money was buried so it means it indicate a period of time at least from that when you look at the strata, you could tell the period of time in which they've been here and when you're talking about Carthage you're talking about at least 212 BC when Carthage was finally destroyed by the by the, by the Romans uh, again the Queen uh, Queen Makeda uh, which you call the Queen of Sheba there are maps which Rome, the church in Rome, the so-called Holy Father, has suppressed these maps from the time of Justinian, showing South America and what is today called Central America. The, the maps there and, and Victoria, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Makeda goes back to at least 892 B.C. Before Christ. Before the, let's let me point right. out another thing, just from the same article. I don't know if we can see this on television. But here is a picture. Tell me what this is, and why do you see this as proof of the presence of Africans in America before? That is the Columbus. head of an Olmec, a, a, a Olmec. And the Olmecs were said to be the first of the indigenous Americans. And uh, if you look, if an Olmec walked in here, then you would believe that he had come from the middle of Africa. And there is no doubt about it that all of the writers prior to racism admitted that the Olmecs were in fact Africans who had come across here. There is no doubt when uh, Pignafetto and others, the point is that Van Settema is writing and others, but Leo Weiner in 1938 at Harvard University wrote a two volume book for which he was fired about the Africans, uh, Olmecs being Africans. And Let me bounce this off of you, okay? You take the same statue, mm -hmm. you say, well, you say that they're obviously Black African. features, yes. thick lips, broad nose. Mm -hmm. The stereotype. But, okay, other, the stereotype. Other anthropologists say, I think Michael Cole was one of them. He says that this is not a black man. He said the people who made these statues, which I understand are eight feet high, the people who made these statues didn't have sharp enough tools to give them white features. So they're not really black statues. They're white people carved with crude tools. What's your response to that? It's strange that the tools were not sharp enough to make narrow noses, but it was sharp enough to put eyelids. So it would seem to me that an eyelid is harder to make than a tin nose. But uh, Michael Cole is no less a racist than the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, what's the difference between Michael Cole Reagan and the Ku Klux Klan? It does have the same philosophy. What is the difference between the fellows writing the Bible and write about the Queen of Sheba asking, I mean, saying to Solomon, uh, look, uh, look not, ye daughters of Cade, look not upon me because I'm black. My parents sent me in the vineyard and that's all this nonsense. She's black because nature made her black. Her mother and father were black. That's why she's black. Had nothing to do but going in any vineyard, even though it's in the Bible. Okay, you talked about religion. We're going to get to that in a while. Let me turn to Dr. Simmons. You also agreed with this position that Africans were in this I have no problem, no doubt. Why? As a matter of fact, speaking about, uh, like Dr. Ben mentioned, uh, and you spoke about Michael Nico, I owned a book several years ago 
and still have it in my possession by Michael D. Coe himself, who is considered one of America's leading archaeologists and anthropologists from Yale, one of America's most prestigious schools. In his own work, he referred to them as Negroid. And he went farther to state the title of the book is America's First Civilization, what he calls civilization. And to turn around and to tell these youngsters and other people in America in particular that the black men was the first to build any type of civilization in the Americas will be disturbing to Americans. And so... Let me ask you this. Yes. E even if you're right, let's say you're right, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. What kind of difference? It takes the inferiority complex out of the black man who felt that his only beginning and relationship here in this part of the world is that of slavery. Then it puts him in the driver's seat because, again, they don't tell you that they are man-made hills within the United States. They call them mounds. And they range from in the Midwest all the way down the eastern sea coast of the United States. And they have found artifacts in them that are similar to things found in West Africa and in Egypt, which is Northeast Africa, that predates the arrival of the so-called indigenous Indians to these lands. Another thing is some years ago, one of the major television networks back in New York, I don't remember exactly which one, ABC or which, had did a documentary and they said that these Almecs are the ones who brought right into the Americas about 3000 BC to tell blacks that they ought to be glad to enter into these schools of higher learning today in order to read and write because their ancestors back in Africa couldn't read and write. You see how, what it will do to tell them that they brought right into the Americas? Antonio Pigavetta that Dr. Ben mentioned, who sailed with Magellan when Magellan came to the so-called New World in 1519, when they landed at the land of Virgin, which we now call Brazil, they were m met by people in canoes that carried as many as 40 people. And Antonio Pigavetta recorded that these people were jet black. It seemed that they came out of uh, the infernal marshes. That meant that they were burned. He said, naked and black as they are in 1519, 27 years after Columbus's arrival to the so-called New World. Another thing they don't tell you, again, you heard my associate. Well, why haven't we heard these things before? Why don't we read them in the New York Times, Birmingham News? Uh, if I stole another man's country, and I brought your ancestors here to work for me, could I tell you how great your ancestors were and still expect to keep you in slavery? Well, well let, me, let me give you a better, uh, not better necessarily, but an added situation of that. Uh, most black people in Birmingham, Alabama, like in Harlem, New York, are Christians, and they go to a, in a black community, a black minister, a black congregation, but with a white Jesus. Because they didn't know that, the, that Jesus, up until Pope, Ma, Pope Julius II, had the first black Jesus painted. He had Michelangelo to do it. But up until that time, the world worshipped the black Madonna and child. It, okay, it, the present open. Pope is going back to Poland All right. to worship at the statue of the black Madonna and child. That's in the New York Times. But what the Times says the next day, don't worry about the black Madonna and the child. She was originally white, but there was a storm in the 16th century, passed by and, and, and turned it black. But the same storm must have gone to Spain, and then it went to Ethiopia, and it went to the Soviet Union, and turned all the black Madonnas back. It was a hell of a storm. <laughs> well, okay, let me just, let's get together here. I mean, we're jumping around, and I think we're going to have a beautiful, interesting hour. Okay, because right. of this subject, I was going to get to this later, but since you open it, let's deal with it. Okay, well, you're in the Bible Belt, gentlemen. I, I heard so. You heard so. And I must tell our audience, we had dinner together earlier, and we, we got into this a little bit. So I, you're going to hear some interesting things. Because you guys are taking issue with a lot of what we grew up with in the Bible as fact. And you're telling me that's not so. You got to put that. What I brought it right here. What is it? Before I show you the picture you right. want to see. Right. This is Pope Pius XII right. in his private chapel praying to the black Madonna and child and right. all the popes of Rome in their that? private, just from the church, it's the right. Roman Catholic Church itself. 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 I just got rid of the copy of 
The History of the Black Madonna last night, I brought one copy. Uh, it's published by the Roman Catholic uh, Order of Nuns called the Daughters of St. Paul. And they said that the picture of the Black Madonna and Child in Poland is reputed to have been painted by St. Luke. Now, St. Luke is said to have been one of Jesus' disciples. He ought to know what Jesus had looked like. So if he painted a black woman and child, who am I to say that he wasn't? Besides that, however, in Anacalypse... So, so now you guys are one. saying Jesus was black? We we're not saying it. It's we, what it's, has it, been written that's until history. The, up until the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325, when Rome, under the order of Constantine, the Roman Emperor, ordered the 219th bishop at Nicaea, and they took away Christianity from, 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 from the Africans. Just remember that before they said Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem, they said he was born in a cave in Ethiopia. It was at the Nicene Conference that changed that. Let's go further. That Wait a minute, let me be sure I'm following you now. Uh -huh. You're saying that the birth of Christ as we know it mm -hmm. is not accurate. It's a farce. It was only you realize in what you're saying? a farce, a lie. You know what a lie is? A lie is a lie. <laughs> the person who wrote that at the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325 AD, Constantine, the Roman Emperor, ordered a conference be held because Rome wanted to take over Christianity from the people who started it. Christianity was started with Pantheus and Boethius in a place called Alexandria in Egypt. And Egypt is in Africa. I saw it up to January the 9th, it was there. You talked about that a little bit last night in your lecture. There was a lecture last night, Dr. Simmons, here on campus. You talked about the separation of people don't want us to see Egypt as part of Africa. You talked about the historical thing about blacks being in Egypt as well. Can yes, uh, what, what I did last night... I don't want to get away from the other point. No, right? no, I just figured things just in my mind. Let's deal with what, it. What, what happened is that I dealt last night the fact that Herodotus, that the, the institutions of higher learning, white institutions, considered the father of history. He himself, when he visited Egypt around 450 B.C., almost half a thousand years before Christ, said that the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the people of cultures, which is... Uh, part of present-day Turkey were people of black skin and woolly hair. All right? And so I just want you to understand that the Egyptians we now see are conquerors, just like people who came here and took this land from the Indians. So that they are not indigenous to Africa, those who now rule Egypt. And Egypt is just as much a part of Africa as Birmingham or Alabama is part of the so-called United States. Let me, let, me add this. Let, me, let me just be clear on this. So what you're saying to me now is that the people that we see, Sadat and all those guys, are not true Egyptians? But no. The, the fact that so then, so that mother was a Sudanese, Nasser's mother was a Sudanese, but their fathers were Arab conquerors. The one that was the African was Mohammed Nagib, the first president of Egypt, the one that overthrew Farouk. But one year after that, since he was looking for a hookup with the other Nile Valley countries as it used to be in antiquity, he was removed by the Arab conquerors. The Arabs didn't come to Egypt until 640. The first non-African people came to Egypt, otherwise called the Hyksos, in 1675 BC. The Africans there were already in the 13th dynasty period. They had built every pyramid you saw there before. They had done the S-turn in the Nile. They built every one of the major temples that had already been built, including the Grand Lodge of Luxor. The first European to come there did not arrive until the Greeks arrived with um, uh, Alexander II, the son of Philip of Macedonia. Look, I'm a college graduate. I never heard all this stuff before. Because they didn't intend to teach you that. They can't tell you that you're inferior and teach you that you taught Egypt, um, um, Europe. The first Europeans to be civilized by the Africans were the Greeks. When you heard of Homer, the first European to have written anything, you couldn't miss that. They said that Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And that was not until 833 B.C. The Africans had already in 255,000 at the Tassili Mountain, they had the civilian period, first, second, and third, the pre-dynastic period, all the way up. The Africans had produced men like this, Inhotep, the multi-genius that designed the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, the first man to be a physician that even Hippocrates, the so-called father of medicine, is giving him credit and calling him the god of medicine. The Greeks changed his name from Inhotep to Escalapius. There he is. There he is. Wait a minute. This gets into what you were saying. So wait a minute, you guys are telling me now that black men taught Homer and... 
as a matter of went fact, to Egypt to school. As a matter of fact, the Egyptians said Homer was Egyptian, not uh, Greek. That's right. It's only the, 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 the Europeans said that. The Westerners now said he was. But let, let us go back. Remember that Homer himself said in the Odyssey what? That the god Zeus and Apollo, Europe's first gods, came from Ethiopia. Go read it. In, and I didn't write it, it, it. He wrote it. Thales, from Thales down to Socrates. And Socrates down to Aristotle, which they call the pre-Socratian philosophers and the post-Socratian philosophers. Each and every one, including Plato, who spent 15 years in Egypt receiving their education. You're saying Plato was educated in Egypt? 15 years! See, what Before you all had nothing right. of him, what every one of them. What you'd have me believe then also, it's a part of what you said last night is that Pla Plato and these guys went back home and they were big guys. But they were taught in Egypt? Is that what you They, they came there for, they the came for the education. And they said it. They didn't hide it. They it's the modern writers, the modern instructors and professors who are trying to deny it. Right, let me, let me you, you, you can't have a racist school in Birmingham, non-racist education. Let me get to something you said last night that's not going to make you very popular in this town and may not allow you to get safely out of town. <laughs> you told an audience last night that you saw, I think, in a tomb in Egypt. Yeah. You saw it with your own two eyes, right? Yes. You told me that Moses, there were more than 10 commandments, Moses just took 42. Four. The negative four. confessions. Long, Moses isn't supposed to have been born until 1349 BC. The Africans were already in the 18th dynastic period. Akhenaten, who died before Moses was born, and uh, Enotep, who, who died more than 2,000 years before the birth of Moses, and others at the Grand Lodge of Mem had 42 laws called now the negative confession, one for each gnome. They go like this, I have not killed man nor woman. I have not spoken ill of the gods. Moses is supposed to be born in Egypt, they said, at a place called Succoth. Already, um, it says that Moses get the Ten Commandments of Mount Sinai. It's, Mount Sinai is still in Africa, right? The Sinai Peninsula is a part of Egypt. More so, is it possible for Moses to be born in Egypt, educated in Egypt? At age 85, he's still in Egypt, and he did not learn the negative confessions. Is it possible for you to go to school, born in the United States, go to kindergarten, uh, uh, elementary, junior high school, high school, and college, and never heard of the United States Constitution? Then it would have been possible, impossible for Moses when everybody had to read the negative confession five times a day for Moses not to have seen those 42 laws and extracted 10 of, the, 10 of them, leave 32 more. Now, if you could, get, you could go to the temple of Setaiwan at Abydos, to go to the, the, the tomb of Ramesses VI at the Valley of the Kings, go to the temple of Edfu, where you would, by the way, see the story of an immaculate conception and a virgin birth 4,100 years before the Mary and Jesus story. As a matter of fact, wait. wait. No, no, let, me this, this wait, let, me, let me just put it in the form of a question then. I mean, I don't want to stop this, because we're here for information. But what you're trying to get me to believe is that Moses didn't get the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai, but he got them from his fellow Africans. Moses was a high priest in Egypt, Egypt. A high priest of the Egyptians in Egypt. Then what was he teaching? He wasn't a high priest of the Jews. There were no Jews in those days, they called him. They were, remember now, there was no, no Israel yet. Israel is not until it, um, 1196. And when we to hear of Abraham, Avram as he was called, coming into Egypt, the, Egypt, the Africans are already in Egypt, already in the 14th dynastic period when he shows up. All of the pyramids are built. That's another thing. Everyone, the 62 pyramids in Egypt were built before the first Jew was born. Why was he fleeing from the Pharaoh? Let me ask what you was the charge? I could write anything when I want to write, you know. Who's going to stop me from writing if I got the power? I was about to ask you, what kind of trouble do you get into for holding these kind of views? Oh, up some, well, the other day, I was, a black sister spat in my face and, because she couldn't take that. To, she couldn't take that Jesus was black. She said, no, no, no. I mean, he ain't had no color. If he didn't have no color, how John the Baptist saw him to baptize him? Do you realize that you're getting at the foundation? <laughs> that you, you, were, you were shooting and digging away at the foundation of what most of us grew up believing? Yeah, well, we believe a lot of things for a long time. One thing, they give us three pages in the Bible. Slave, obey your master. And that's what we believe for the longest time. They said that Jesus said, so how would Jesus, who fought the system, said to the slave, obey your master? It didn't sound rational, would it? 
So look, most of the things, we're in, we're in a European system. You could come to this university and spend four years, go back and spend another two for your, for your masters and another one or two for your doctorate and never had any course at all about Africans. But every day you come here, you got courses about Europeans. This is an extension of European culture, European belief, European racism. And it, is, it has no intent of teaching about the Africans. The Africans built the Europeans' first university, the University of Salamanca in Spain. These are historical records. They just, it's just like... Hey, one, one of the things you said last night is that it's not just black people who are saying these things. No. Most of this information are written by white. In white books. It's just that they don't emphasize it in the classroom. As a matter of fact, let me back you up when you open up the, the uh, discos. We were speaking about Columbus. None of them in here, none of the listening audience, even in the air, has the faintest idea that in the life of Columbus, when after his death, his family had to go to court because charges were raised, and this is in the record in the Vatican, in the secret archives of the Vatican, that Columbus was shown a map of where the Queen of Sheba that Dr. Ben spoke about, this black woman who had made it with, uh, with Solomon and produced the son, Menelik I, and they lived more than 900 years before the birth of Jesus, had already sailed through what we now call the Strait of Gibraltar, came to lands to the west that was longer than Africa and Europe combined. And that brother is North, South, and Central America. May, may I add this? You, right here at this university they teach, and I've just been here a few days, right? A day. They teach in this institution because it's the same as Cornell or anywhere, that Hippocrates was the father of medicine. He's not until 333 BC. Let me read this for you. Okay, you teach at Cornell, is that? I teach at Cornell also. They let you teach this kind of stuff at Cornell? They, they teach it now, I'm there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 1700, in 1700 BC, that's 1400 years before Hippocrates, you can find the, the, the Cahoon Medical Papyrus, Papyrus' paper. Okay. Uh, a compendium of information about women's diseases and pregnancies. In 1600 BC, that's 1300 years before Hippocrates, the Edward C. Smith Papyrus, a comparative surgical text and anatomical inquiry. It especially deals with the spinal column. 1550, let me jump to one here. The, the, the um, Ebers Papyrus. A medical, there is the whole book on it. A medical paper by Queen Hatshepsut, the first known queen in history, an Ethiop uh, Egyptian queen. A papyrus designed to show women how to develop a method to stop pregnancy, to insert into the vagina, made of the shrub of acacia and honey, which break down into lactic acid. Not only that, Monsanto, wait, 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 me, so, so we're talking about birth control. Birth control in 1550 BC by the Africans. It's a long time before the pill. A few days before but, the pill. But keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, however, all it, keep in mind that Europe is not yet in history. It, Europe is in history. Is history. Yet. Yet. Just, all I ask, one at a time. All right. Right okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The civilization I'm began, Homer, I'm not written his alien analysis. And, he, and the hero. Okay, all the stuff that you're oh. saying, you're saying we can find this. Oh, I, I, look, I, nothing say if it's not here, it's either in Doc's library or mine at, back in New York. Nothing we take for granted. What well, the books we that we brought them. And you're saying they're not all written I, by black men? No, no. And no, a, no, black a, black and a black men is written, okay. look now. Okay. Anacalypse is a two-volume work by Sir Godfrey Higgins, written in 1838 in England and published by Watson Company. The Golden Bow is a 13-volume book by Sir James Frazier published simultaneously in the United States and England, and it was published in 1938. Bible myths and the parallels in other religions written by Thomas W. Jones and is published in 1887 by Watson Company, London, England. The um, Ruins of Empire by Kong C. F. Volney is published, there it is, it's published in 1792 by, by simultaneously in England and France, done by uh, a man who was Napoleon, with Napoleon de Bonaparte. Uh, um, let, me, let me just say this about that. If we just give you the benefit of the doubt and consider what you're saying to be true, I mean, you are chipping away at everything we've ever been taught, most of the, we, what we believe. But you were taught it as slaves. Nobody. Slave in three pieces? Yes. We are no longer physical slaves, but we are mental slaves. And this is the worst form of slavery. Some of us believe that the Cadillac and the house on the beach makes us free.
but it's the mind that makes us free. Well, I'm just glad I have to ask the questions and don't have to fin any of this stuff. Go into something else for a minute. Tell us about some of those pictures, because I want to uh, much into this hour. Well, this picture that you are looking at right here is the picture of the of Pope Saint Peter. The first pope of Roman Catholicism, as the church admits. But this the man church has a black said face. That black face, black everything. <laughs> if you strip him, he's black all the way down except his fingernails and all those things. Like well, that. how do I know you just didn't get a picture and paint a black face on it? No, that is a statue in Rome. That that you're looking at. Now, right? now at the best take a time. jet. Can't afford take, it. Take the fastest means and go to Rome and, and come see back. Right and there. then tell us if it's not. That same picture. I used to teach at Roman you Catholic say, wait a colleges. This is there now. Yes, now. And the every pope, face? every pope kisses Has to his, kiss his feet. Every pope kisses his toe. They said his toes are worn by the thousand kisses placed there. If the book that I got it from was that that heavy, I'll bring it. That you see the pope kissing Pope John uh, the Twenty Third. And, and who, who is this black guy? Saint Peter. Peter. The man that they told you, every black minister, every white minister says, Jesus gave Peter the keys to heaven, which means that no white man, nobody else could enter into heaven unless he come by way of me, the black man. But I hold the keys to heaven. Right. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and there's no reason why Peter should not open for me. He suffered too then. What else you got there? Well, what I have here is some black saints. St. Augustine, some of you say the St. Augustine. For centuries, Columbus has been celebrated as the brave explorer who stumbled upon the Americas in 1492, opening up a new world for exploration and colonization. But let's unpack this mighty bit, shall we? First off, Columbus did not actually discover America. Indigenous people had been living there for thousands of years before his arrival. This civilization had rich cultures, advanced societies, and complex trade network long before Columbus set foot on this shore. And let's not forget the brutal reality of Columbus' action. His arrival marked the beginning of centuries of colonization, exploitation, and violence against indigenous populations. Millions of indigenous people were killed or enslaved, their cultures destroyed, and their lands stolen in the name of European expansion. So why do we continue to celebrate Columbus Day and perpetuate the might of discovery? Well, it is largely due to the way history has been written and taught. For centuries, the voices and perspectives of indigenous people have been silenced or ignored. But thankfully, that is starting to change. Indigenous activists and scholars are reclaiming their history and challenging the Columbus might. It is time for us to acknowledge the true history of the Americas, to recognize the resilience and contributions of indigenous people, and to rethink the way we teach and commemorate our past. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to share your thoughts in the comment box below. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.